Last week's vlog was not a really great success because the numbers were a bit low. So today I will deliver the second part of the Q&A, but I actually will re-record all the answers because only the answers I gave in that second part are again like 50 minutes and I will do it a bit more concise for you. Plus I also got something else at the end I want to talk about. As you might have noticed, we have already passed the half of the year. So it's time for a little um, like review, no, recap, I don't know. Just like looking back at what you did and what you planned and stuff like this. So after the answers to your questions, we will also look at a few projects I'm currently working on that are part of what I've planned for this year. I will let you know about the side projects. I will let you know how things went. And I also want to know how your year went so far. But first, let's roll the intro. So before leaving today's video early, which some of you do for whatever reason, please leave a comment below and let me know how the first half of the year was for you. Did you accomplish your goals or did you actually have any goals? Did anything great or bad happen? Um, next week I want to talk a bit about what happened to you and what you achieved, so leave everything below. Okay, of course, now the answers to the questions, I've seen the questions before, but I will be more concise and I will pick my words a bit better. So let's start with question number one. How about your early days at the Ionic Academy? What do you do to get traction and be trusted by Ionic developers? So for everyone not knowing my story, I've been blogging about Ionic since a lot of years, I think four, five, six, four, five years. And so I earned the trust of Ionic developers in the early days when Ionic was still not really popular. That grew, um, I started to build products. At some point I announced that I want to build this membership site and a lot of people uh, previously signed up and then a lot of people joined. And up until this day, I'm in contact with the Ionic team, so sometimes they promote me, they know of course what I do, I'm listed as one of their community leaders, I create weekly videos with Ionic content, so yeah. By now people simply trust me and what I say because of what I've done over the last years. What does the tattoo on your left hand say? This is actually a Steve Jobs quote from his famous commencement speech at speech at Stanford. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. So check out link below the video if you haven't seen it. Even if you don't like him, it is um, definitely something you should have seen in your life. And also, I got this quote and I also got the image right there. That's actually a longer quote from this video and it is something that inspires me all the time. So that's why I got it on my arm. This was actually before I became self-employed. Up until this day it is a great reminder and I plan to maybe have a bit more. You might have seen some uh, quotes here around my desktop. Maybe one of them will make it somewhere on my body. Perhaps. So my non-coding question is what else besides coding gives you the adrenaline rush that keeps you going in life? Like for some people it's adventure sport and for some it's just a regular hobby like music. What is yours? Um, I'm not that adrenaline junkie like some other people. I like to keep things smooth and relaxed all the time. So what I enjoy is time with my family. I enjoy developing new apps. That is actually some sort of adrenaline for me when I hit a barrier, hit a problem and then I'm finally after a day able to solve that problem. That is actually something that I really enjoy. Of course I do sports. I ran a half marathon last year. Woo! So that is something I do. But I really don't like you know, like roller coaster. I, I'm not a big fan of roller coasters or those parks. Perhaps it is playing video games, but I said this earlier, I'm not playing a lot anymore. You know, I just enjoy life as it is, right? So I don't need any adrenaline or any drugs or anything like that. I'm just in general a happy person and don't need any spikes of anything specific. Last question. How do you keep or try to keep the steady cash flow? And now that you have a kid, a cute one, thanks a lot. Uh, how do you cope up with those things, the financial burnout crunch? Um, yeah, the problem was in the beginning, or when you start to become like self-employed, that you don't have a steady income. And the problem, of course, was for me the same 
but the good thing was I very quickly had the um, quite regular income of the Ionic Academy members that pay a monthly or annual fee and that income has grown uh, and it is almost covering like the most of my things but keep in mind all the taxes in Germany. Right now I'm not really afraid of this and I know the wolf is not at the door. Not all the members will leave overnight. There will be some people supporting me. I also do the consulting and freelancing work and I'm also doing more projects. I do these other projects simply because I know I can't forever run the academy or stay up to date with Ionic or be relevant or whatever. At some point I just might become outdated or I don't learn as fast anymore and for that day I'm preparing my additional projects with them I want to generate like another side income maybe another side business and talking about this side project brings us to another topic that I wanted to talk about with you my plan for this year was to develop um, one side project or at least one side project every two months so I wanted to do six. Then at the first review of the year, I reduced that number to four. So every three months, one project. And up to date, I have at least two. So that's actually a good sign. The first one you already know about was the Ionic Job Board. I wouldn't call that project a success or failure because I learned a lot of things about Firebase, cloud functionality, payment with Stripe, but in terms of money, it was a failure so far. I still think it is a good idea, but right now I just can't get it to the market where it should be. The second one is something that I just released um, like last week and it is called the Insta Companion app. And within this application, you can create captions for your, come on, Instagram account and store the uh, text for the whatever post and then also add all the text from a group that you can store. That project actually was pretty cool because after I released it on Instagram, perhaps you follow me already, if not you should do it, um, a lot of people installed the application. It is now available on iOS and Android. Search for Insta Companion. Um, I wasn't allowed to use Instagram, Apple rejected the app. That was fine, I think, that was okay. And people started to really use this and I enjoyed that because I just created it for free. I wanted to have something like this. It was a small project. I'm currently working on some in-app purchase for a pro version. That's like the standard thing everyone does. Now in terms of another project that's pretty interesting, especially if you're a mobile developer, let me show you something. So whenever you have to release a new app, you have to prepare those uh, app screenshots for the iOS and Android App Store and that is actually a task I don't really enjoy and I wanted to make this um, more easily for you. There are already tools on the market but I wasn't satisfied with them so I started a project on my own. I know I should do a screencast but I don't want to cut anything else. So what you can do with a program is you upload a screenshot then you enter some text in this box. Let's call this awesome text and then you hit get preview and what you get is a preview with your awesome text uh, device and the right size for your screenshot. It doesn't look that complicated but actually the image processing on the server side is a bit complicated. I have solved the initial problems. I've created like a proof of concept for myself that this is working. Now I'm working on the web version for you to upload screenshots and generate those app reviews. Again, my monetization plan isn't that fixed. I know about some options like pay per screen or pay for a bunch of screen or just pay for additional font settings or different image sizes or whatever. I'm not yet decided. Um, perhaps let me know if you're interested in such a tool. I'm open for any recommendations or wishes, problems that you have encountered while creating your app. Apparently that brings us to the end of today's vlog. Thanks for all the questions you've submitted. I hope the answers were fine. We will do this in the future again. Let me know how the first half of the year went for you and what projects you're working on. Um, if you're interested in this new asset tool, leave some comments below. Questions are always welcome. Check out the Insta Companion app in the App Store. As you can see, a lot of things going on. A lot of great topics for the next time that we can talk about and your questions are of course always welcome. This week, go out, start your next side project or work on the existing one. Let me know about it. I really love side projects and seeing like small tools um, become a success in the end. So have a great week. Happy coding. Simon.